Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This is a video on Vespa PX clutches, uh, large frame clutches altogether really. It's part of the PX engine build I'm doing, so if you haven't seen any of that, please go and have a look. Um, I'm just doing this one as a separate video because it might be of interest as a specific item that you might be dealing with. So today we're going to strip and look at a PX125-150 clutch and the later Cosa type. So, as usual, our victims are waiting for us on the bench, so let's go and have a look. Right, here are our clutches. They're all a bit dirty because they've been sitting on a shelf for a very long time. So, this is the later Cosa type clutch, which is what came with my PX engine project. These are, that's a, an older PX125-150 with six springs. The 200's got seven. And this is a brand new LML. New old stock clutch. Now, I've counted the teeth. 20, 20, 21. Now the Cosa clutch is better, stronger, more reliable than the earlier type. But given the engine this is going on has got a Molossi 166 kit on it, I think the very slight improvement of the up gear makes me think I'd rather have the 21 tooth clutch on it. So this is what we're going to use on the project. So we'll start by stripping that one. So you need a we don't need a clutch compressor. You can do it with various bits of threaded bar and nuts and bolts, but these are so cheap. I'm not sure why you wouldn't get one. I can't remember how much I paid for this, but it's about six quid. It wasn't a lot at the time anyway. So that goes on there, that goes on there. And then we wind our nut down. And you can see the... Uh, Clutch plates moving in there, they go loose. And then there's a large circlip which is held in a groove round there. So we'll find the edges of that, which are there. I'm going to hook it. And then we have our first plate, which is a bit tight on this. I'd say these have been sitting for a long time, but that's in good nick. Oh no, this is the LML one. So in fact, no wonder it's in good nick. It is in fact brand new. Right, so there we are. There's a top plate with the corks. Then a metal plate. Double-sided cork. A little bit sticky. It's stuck. There we go. Double sided cork. Another metal plate. Double sided cork. And then our bottom, which comes out. And there is a bush. So let's undo this now. Right, so with our tool out, we have our bottom plate and our springs and cups. Now, there is a bush there. Note its orientation. And then that bush should come undone, but it doesn't want to. Been obviously been sitting for a long time. Okay. And there are our springs and the cups that they sit in. Now, this is brand new and it's all in good nick. If it wasn't, I'd be measuring the spring length, checking no damage for the cups, and then checking the sides of the basket in case I've got any indentations from where the clutch plates have been rattling in and out. 
But that's all good, obviously, because it's all new. I'd also, I think, automatically replace these two bushes. But again, the new, so there's no need for that. So I will reassemble this. Before I use it, I will be soaking all the uh, plates. But for the minute, we'll just reassemble it. So again, we need our tool. There we go. You need to compress it slightly to get the, cool, the tool started. And then wind it down again like you did to release it. Now, before you go all the way down, and I've probably gone too far already, once you've got it started, just uh, use a screwdriver and push the springs into place. You'll hear them go click. I don't know if the microphone picked that up. Right, so that's them in place. Doing the cups, doing place on that. So we will wind our tool down again. On the way. Here we have our bottom. Slightly gritty. Anyway, that needs all, clean, all needs cleaning and then the plates need oiling. And then our double sided again, metal plate, double sided, metal plate, top plate, and then our circlip. Right, we want the circlip behind one of these plates in its groove, not with the open ends in one of the gaps. So we need to start it off in its uh, little groove and then work our way around pushing it into place like so. Make absolutely certain it's in its groove, which it isn't there. There we go. Let it snap into place. Open ends in the middle of that, which is good. And then undo our tool. That's your clutch ready to go. If it had been a P200 clutch on the bottom, on the cover and on the bottom plate, there are two holes which I believe are meant to be lined up. I don't honestly know why, but that's what you're meant to do, I believe. So if you've got 200, just bear that in mind. Right, so I will strip that again and soak the. Uh, the plates overnight in 30 weight gearbox oil, clean it all up, reassemble, and that's going on our engine project. If you haven't seen the rest of the engine project, have a look, it's in the playlists. Right, let's have a look at our Koza clutch. Just picking it up. I'm immediately uh, changing my mind as to what I want to fit on this scooter because it's just so much beefier, it's bigger. It's deeper, chunkier, stronger. Anyway, let's have a look. So, it should come apart just as easily as the other type, using exactly the same compressor. So let's get it wound down all the way. And again, our... Uh, clip should unhook which it does and then like the other ones we have a top plate dirty but actually still oiled and not that worn okay and then a metal plate Double sided friction, again usable. Another metal plate. Another double sided friction.
And then, I don't know if you can see this, we have a notched plate. double-sided friction and in our bottom plate which is loose and again I'll just show you this watch this falling out we'll come back to that in a minute that's our bottom plate which is thicker than the uh, other plates and has a different tooth pattern because it fits on that you can't really get them mixed up to be honest, and we have our center, which is all in good nick. We have our washer, which sits over there, which can only go one way on because it's shaped to fit over the protrusion. That's also good nick. These often wear like the other clutches, but that's that's good, not scored or anything. And then in the middle of our cozy clutch, we have a bush, which again is super tight, won't come off, but it's unmarked, so I'm not taking it off. And then eight springs on little pegs to hold it in place. Now, given how good this clutch is, with very, very, well, very minor signs of anywhere at all, I'm quite happy to reuse those. Again, if, if the rest of the clutch was worn out and showing signs of distress, you'd change them. Right, so the edges of our basket are completely unworn, so this clutch has not done many miles. So, that discovery has made my mind up, I think, but we'll wait to the end of the video to discuss that. So I will clean all this up and oil the clutch plates, etc, etc, etc. Right, just so we can see how it goes back together, we have our eight springs. Now, the center, all we've got to do is line up its serrations, serrations with the whole holes in the uh, clutch bell, and it will compress again. So let's do that. Right, that's all the way down as you can see. Then our washer, our center. Again, all this will be lubricated when I'm rebuilding it. I'm just showing you how it goes back together. And then we have our thick plate with the uh, smaller serrations in the center. You can see which way it went round as witness marks. But anyway. That drops down in there, all the way down, and then a double-sided cork, which I just jammed, there we go, double-sided cork, and then our notched plate. I'm not, I'm not sure the function of the notched plate. Right, thinking about it, maybe I should check and see if there's any difference between the notch plate and the other plain plates. Let me just uh, so let's have a quick butchers. That can't be right. Just oh, sorry, you have to bear with me here, something wrong with my head. <laughs> 
Right, sorry about that. My digital calipers seem to have gone insane. And they appear to be reading exactly half the correct measurement. Anyway, so we'll use this as a comparative rather than an absolute. So that's reading 0.74. So that would be about one and a half melee for the notch plate. And for the next plane plate, just stick that in more weighting. For the next plane plate, it's the same, it's reading the same to all intents and purposes. That's really irritating, these calipers are uh, useful, but absolutely uh, of no use if they don't register the correct. Yeah, almost exactly half. Okay, well as a comparative test. There is no difference between the notch plate and the other plane plates. Right, I'm back again. I double checked uh, the battery and put another battery in and it looks like we're back working properly. So that should read one and a half milli, which it does. That's the notch plate. Plane plate. 1.49, one and a half. Yeah, there you go. Fluctuating slightly. So yeah, there is no difference between the notch plate thickness and the other plain plate thicknesses. So why it's notched, I really don't know. Anyway, back to sticking it all together. Difference or not, that's the correct way to have them stacked. So your thick plate at the bottom, then your notch plate, and then the two others. Why? Who knows? Please tell me how. I really don't know. And then uh, we fit our. All oh, my hands are cold this morning. It's freezing in here. So excuse me if I'm a little bit fumbly. Is that in its groove? Yes, it is. And that's a Koza clutch. Right. Right, I'm very disappointed I've been able to show you a knackered bush. So we'll have a quick look at our third clutch, which although it is rusty, and dirtier than the others, I suspect that it also has not done a great mileage. So just skip this part if you're bored of clutches coming apart and move on to the final conclusions which are two or three minutes down the line. But if you want to hang on for a second it won't take long and we'll just see if this one's got a knackered bush or not. Oh, another tight one. Oh my word. A bit stuck. There we go. No, we don't go. There we go. Again, that's not bad, Nick, at all. I suspect this one isn't that old either. It's just it's been sitting in slightly damper conditions. It has been used because there are stronger witness marks on the plates. It's not, uh, it's not horrendous. Ah, in fact, it's definitely been used because we're starting to get a little bit of bluing on the edge there. So it's been slipped at some time. A bit of heat. So it's definitely second hand, this one. Aha! 
success. Now, that's what I was trying to witter on about earlier. Once you start getting a bit aware, and it, this hasn't got a lot of wear, but it's got some, the bush comes off a lot more easily. And I don't know if you can see inside there, but you can see witness marks from where it's been spinning on there, which is very so also very slightly marked. I don't know if you can see that. Not bad, but that's what happens. They wear on that shaft, and they're meant to come off like that. I'd, I would reuse that, to be honest, because it's proper suction. Oh, if it's tight to go back on. You can feel it dragging as you pull it off, so it's far from being worn out. And in our bottom bush, shim, whatever you want to call it. Now, I don't know, again, it's difficult. But this one is definitely much more worn across there. And thin. So that would be an automatic replacement and is showing signs of it spinning on the bottom as well. That would be an automatic replacement. Good. I'm glad, I, I'm glad our third one has finally shown us that. Okay, so we will leave that as that and move on. So just before we leave our clutches, Back to fitting them again. Uh, so in the process of making this video, I was running through the options in my head again, and they're not as straightforward as I initially thought, because the crank I've got doesn't have the notch in for mounting the castellated nut that would be used to fit the uh, six spring earlier clutch. Now I can use a cozer nut and a wavy washer to attach it to the crank. But then we have the problem of our clutch spacer. Now the engine's got an auto loop spacer and a non-notched crank so it must have had a cozer type clutch fitted originally. That won't work with that. The non auto lube spacer is a different thickness. So, after all that deliberation, I've completely changed my mind. Given what I've got and my lack of desire to spend any money, I'm not going to use the 21 tooth LML clutch after all. I'm going to stick with the Koza because it should fit with that spacer. The nut will be the correct one for that type of clutch and we now know that this Koza clutch is in good condition. So the only difference is the uh, one tooth less gearing. Um, I'll just have to see how it goes. I can always swap it quite easily afterwards. It's not a problem. So the clutch cover I have, uh, which doesn't have its thrust bush, I'll have to buy one of them, is marked up 200. So it's not the one that came with the bike, that's for sure. But our Koza clutch should fit, I mean, it certainly doesn't need to fit that way. It's whether it's enough that way. Now the 200 cover will definitely fit with that clutch and properly spaced, if my memory serves me right. I do have another cover somewhere, I'll have to try and find it, because the later covers obviously should work with the later clutch regardless. So I'll have to try and see what I've got. But anyway, I'm pretty certain some combination of that will work on the bike, we shall see. Right, so that's it for clutches. How they're actually all going to work, you're going to have to watch the, uh, the engine video for to see how it turns out in its final incarnation. I'm now sure I'm going to go with the Koza clutch. Um, so please, 
subscribe please watch the other engine videos and just see what happens with this build thank you all for watching and until next time i'll see you